a light meter or the histogram? Which one would I use and why? I'm gonna tell you on today's episode of Ask David Bergman. Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions. If you've got photo questions, you know what to do. You go to askdavidbergman.com, submit your question right there on that site. I just might pick it to answer here on a future show. Also, I keep talking about my live concert photography workshops. That's because it's so much fun. I'm gonna be around the United States all throughout the fall. I hope you'll join me at a real live arena concert. I teach you how to shoot concerts and really sports action of any kind, and then you get to shoot the show that night. It's kind of a once in a lifetime experience. You go to shootfromthepit.com to check that out. Hope to see you out on the road. All right, I've got a question this week sent in by Pranav G, and Pranav wants to know, light meter versus histogram. What are the pros and cons of each? If you could use one for the rest of your life, which one would it be and why? Pranav, thanks so much for sending in that question. It's really a good one. I had to think about it quite a bit, but I have a very strong feeling on which way I would go with this. If you've watched me before though, you know what I like to do. I'm gonna go back and talk about each option and explain how they work and then why I might choose one or the other. So here's the thing, a light meter, something like this, this is my old Sekonic light meter. I've had this thing for probably 30 years now. They do last forever if you take good care of it. Um, this particular model, they don't make any more, but there are plenty of great light meters out there. If you were a film photographer back in the day, if you're old school like me, you definitely know what this is and how to use it um, because this is all we really had in the film days. If you're a, a modern digital photographer and you just came of age shooting digital, you probably use the histogram more and you maybe don't have as much use for a light meter. But let's talk about what the difference is. First, let's talk about histograms. You know what the histogram is. It's that little graph. It's kind of a, a graph in, that's either in your camera. You can look at it on the camera after you take the picture. Some cameras actually allow you to see it while you're shooting live view as you're shooting but um, you can definitely look at it on the camera after you've taken the picture or especially on the computer as well. What that graph shows you is exactly how bright or how dark your image is. It's a mapping of the pixels in your image. It ignores color and it's really just looking at brightness. And all the way down at the bottom, it's, it's all of the dark areas and all the way at the top are the brightest areas. Anything outside of that range is really either blown out white or super dark black with no detail. So in general, you wanna keep your image within that range so that it can be reproduced properly. You don't wanna really have areas that are completely blown out or completely underexposed dark black. But that's a bit of a personal choice, a bit of a creative choice depending on what you're shooting. But by looking at that graph, it gives you an idea of your image. Now the way the histogram works is as you're shooting the picture or even after you shoot the picture, it's a reflective reading. It's a reading of the light that's just like the sensor in your camera, just like the meter in your camera. It's reading the light that's bouncing back off of your subject and then in the final image. So if there are a lot of dark areas in the image, it's gonna show in that histogram. It's gonna be pushed more to the left. If there are a lot of bright areas, it's gonna be pushed more to the right. In general, like I said, you wanna keep your histogram sort of in the middle. You want that nice mountain range in the middle of your histogram. Now that's what a hist how a histogram works. Now, a light meter, is kind of the opposite. This is not reading um, reflective light, this is reading incident light. Now they do make reflective light light meters, but most cases what you're using a light meter for is the incident light in the room. So what that means is it's actually reading the light that's hitting your subject, not the light that's bouncing off of your subject. So it's sort of seeing it, bef it's, it's sort of seeing it before the light is coming back into the camera and it's just reading the amount of light, the power, the number of photons, the amount of light that's hitting your subject, regardless of if your subject is dark or light. It really doesn't matter. It's just reading that ambient light in the room. So it's a very different kind of a, of a reading in that it's reading the incident light instead of the reflective light. So how would you use that? Usually, and this works whether you're using flash or you're using just ambient light, it doesn't really matter. You usually wanna just read that light as it's hitting your subject, usually on the face if you're doing a portrait, and that way you can see exactly how much light, and it's gonna tell you, it's gonna give you a readout as far as what corresponding aperture or shutter speed you should use to get the proper exposure based on that amount of light. So, we're here today with wonderful Kurt Ozon. We're here in his home studio in Nashville. Thank you, Kurt, for having us here. Um, and by us, I mean me. And so I'm just gonna kinda demonstrate how I would use both of these options in a situation like this. Now, we've got Kurt, the wonderful, wonderfully good-looking Kurt, um, in front of a black backdrop. 
He's wearing a dark shirt, a black shirt. He's got a lot of black on his face. He's got a lot of facial hair. He's got dark hair. And then just the uh, light part of the image is really just his skin. So if I was using a camera and just using the histogram, let's pull out a camera. This is the, uh, if you're wondering about gear, this is the Canon R5 mirrorless with the grip on it, the 24-70 2.8, and uh, that's it. I'm just gonna shoot ambient light. Again, this works with flash as well. Just for simplicity, we're gonna do it with ambient light. So if I go ahead and take a look through the lens here, and I'm gonna make a picture. If I let the meter, the histogram, um, just figure out just like an average histogram, it's probably gonna give me somewhere around here let's see let me just uh this is i'm at 3200 iso because we're just shooting available light here with the video lights and i'm at 2.8 and let's say 60th of a second there you go now you can see the histogram there from that image it's actually a decent looking histogram because it's averaging out the whole scene and it's seeing all that dark area and it's not really seeing that much of the light area of kurt's face because most of the frame is dark actually i'm going to do one more i'm going to go a little wider even I'm using the eye autofocus, which makes this really easy. And there you go. Now you can see the histogram of that, and it looks pretty darn good. However, I have to make an adjustment because I know there's a lot of dark in this frame, and I want it to be dark. I want the dark part to be dark. So I'm actually going to speed up my shutter speed here. I'm going to go up to 250. Now I'm at 250, 28 at 3200, and I'm going to make that same picture. Boom. And let me do one a little off-center, just make it a little more interesting. There we go. And that is actually how I want the image to look. But the histogram didn't really help me in this case because there's so much dark area. Now, if I wanted to use the histogram to really get this exposure properly done, what I should do is really zoom in super tight <laughs> right there on Kurt's face. And that is going to give me more uh, of the skin tone. That's going to give me a proper histogram because that's the area that I'm most concerned about. I want to expose properly for his skin tone and not as much for his beard or the background. So in that case, I would to be able to read it from the histogram, that's how I would have to do it. Now, if I was to take the light meter, put the camera down, and I take the light meter here. With a light meter, what you do is you set two of the three parameters and then it gives you the third one. So I'm at 3200 ISO, and then I'm going to set my aperture to 2.8 because that's what I'm shooting. And then with an ambient reading, it's really simple. You just push down the button and it's reading the light on this, that's hitting this dome here. This one's a little dirty, so I'm sure it's gonna be affected by that. But, um, and it's gonna read the light that's hitting. So if I come in here and just put it right in front of Kurt's face and hit that thing, guess what it says? 250th of a second, which is exactly what I wanted. It's reading that light that's hitting him directly and it's telling me the proper exposure for this light in this room is 250th of a second. It's not seeing any of the black area. It doesn't care. It's just reading the light that's hitting him. Now again, I still have to use that reading and make adjustments if I want to. If I want that dark area to be lighter, I know that I have to slow down my shutter speed. If I want it to be even darker than that, I have to speed up my shutter speed. But that's a decision that I have to make from a creative standpoint. But as far as just the light that's hitting him, that is the quote proper reading, 250th of a second at 2.8. And you could see when I shot that image at that exposure that that was the proper image. So to answer your question, if I had to choose one or the other for life and could only use one of them, no question in my mind, the light meter would be the way to go. I just feel like reading that incident light instead of the reflective light. The reflective light is too biased. It's too affected by what is in the frame, whereas a light meter is not. Now again, both have different uses. They're both useful. Histogram is super useful if you're outdoors and you can't really see the screen very well and you want to um, you know, really read the data to, to check your exposure. It's absolutely, absolutely a great way to go. Again, you can see if you've got areas that are blown out or underexposed and will not be reproduced properly. Um, so it's definitely a good tool to have. I'd rather have both of them for different uses, but if I had to pick one, absolutely, the light meter is the way I would go. So thanks for sending that question. I hope that helps. I uh, appreciate it. Remember, if you've got photo questions, you go to askdavidbergman.com. Send it in. I might answer it on a future show. Also, I hope you're already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel. If not, go ahead and click that button down below. Use that little bell icon. You'll be notified as soon as new shows come out for myself and all the other photo hosts right here on Adorama TV. Remember, I'm back here every Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern with a brand new question. I'll be back here next week, maybe with Kurt. 
Maybe not. Right here on Ask David Bergman.